This is Byron Lazine and Nicole White, and you are tuned into episode 177 of The Real Word. Word is up. We're all over the place on our headlines. We've got Housing Wire leading off racket number one. You, you threw in a realtor.com, but this is a PDF. Well, it's You're an R. Wanna... It's an R. It's an R thing. Okay. Yeah, yeah. National Association of Realtors. Yep. The 2020 Profile of Home Buyers and Sellers is out. It's a full PDF. We've got the link. You want to check that out. And then we're back to Inman for the Marketeer. Marketeer is amazing. We've talked about Glenda in the past. I'm excited for that one. I love one. Glenda. I could just listen to her talk. Yeah. It's, no, she it's does. The, She's it's a... the accent. And she says it with such conviction that you yeah. just like, she could tell me that the sky is green and I would believe her. She's a great storyteller. Yes. So we're going to get into that in Marketeer. Leading off, racket number one, is the appraisal process color blind? This is from Housing Wire. Leaders should seek reasonable and effective solutions to eliminate racial discrimination from the home buying process. So th this is all focused around appraisals, as mentioned, and uh, there, there's been multiple reports of race bait appraisal bias among certain appraisers in varied locations across the nation. Uh, they're referencing here a Washington Post article. There's a New York Times article that they've also linked up and uh, various other local news outlets, okay? So just recently, what happened? What is the news? Recently in June, this month, here in 2021, the White House put out a fact sheet on this issue, all right? So the administration states that it will aggressively combat housing discrimination given the focus, uh, uh, given the focus here and the clear communication from the administration, what should be done? All right, first, and so, the fact sheet is linked, but this is what they're saying should be done first. Every lender should have an escalation process for second level review for any appraiser to a minority buyer that comes in uh, below value or estimated value. If warranted, lenders should proactively support a second appraisal. All right. So how did they get to this one? Before we get to number two and three, let's go to that Washington Post article. Mm -hmm. um, and this is a one off, you know, example, example, but there's, but multiple. there's multiple examples out yes. there. So, so we're just going to go with this one example in Washington Post which was located in, go, where the heck was go that? Go up there, up here. There's I got the Washington Post link yeah. up. All right, so that was uh, Gwen and Lorenzo Mitchell. They were in Denver. It was a Denver. January article. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, January Washington Post, January 21st. Um, and anyways, they wanted to do a home equity loan, so they had to have the appraiser come out. Yep, they wanted so they to could, refi, yep. Yeah, re basically to, refi to the house. Mm -hmm. And they are south of the... Um, Martin Luther uh, Boulevard. No, some boulevard I, no, in town. I, no, that's where they. That's where the comps were pulled. Uh, the comps were pulled south, so they're on one side of this boulevard, and the comps were all pulled from the other, other side. side. All right, yep. so they're in Park Hill, uh, or the the comps were were pulled from houses from the black side of Park Hill. They're on a diverse side of park hill and Anyways. they got they, they decided to do this appraisal because they based on what they had seen selling in their neighborhood they believed that their house was going to be worth between 450 and 550. right and they they basically were being very conservative they said if the comps are between 450 and 550 we should be right at 500. the appraised value for their home equity line of credit came in at 405,000. and again all the comps were pulled from a uh, you know, different of part town. of town mm -hmm. so it was not a, you know, a true um, comparison in, mm -hmm. in their neighborhood. And they were home. She was home when no, this... No, no, He was home. Lorenzo was home, who is black. Lorenzo, three kids were home. Okay. When the appraiser came. Okay, so they were like, what the heck? Right. Appraiser obviously comes to the house, takes photos, takes measurements, does the report, met Lorenzo, the three kids, because they welcome him in the home, do the appraisal. Mm -hmm. They're there for like 10 minutes. These appraisers don't really even do anything at right. the house. It's a total joke uh, how appraisers you know, appraise homes, in my opinion. We'll get into that in a we little bit. We will get to that. And I'm sure I'll have appraisers, I'm sure as you always, will. when I talk about this topic mm -hmm. in the comments. Mm -hmm. But um, so the, so Lorenzo and, and his wife, Gwen, are like, okay, Gwen happens to be white. What the heck's up with this? We need to have a second appraisal. All right. right? So they said, you know what? We're just going to have Gwen... Gwyneth, I know a Gwen. She goes by Gwyneth now. Is that a, is that a song? I don't know. Is that a thing? Gwen, Gwyneth. Anyways, her she's not going by Gwyneth. Gwen is like I'm just gonna be home, just me, to meet the appraiser. So white Gwen meets the appraiser. The next appraisal comes in a hundred and forty five thousand dollars more than the first appraisal. So four hundred and five thousand 
all the way up to 550, the top end of, the of where those yep. comps were coming in. So clearly huge disparity in mm -hmm. the two appraisals. Now, an appraisal is an opinion of value. And, and obviously they're arguing with where those comps were pulled in the first one. And the fact that Lorenzo was there and not Gwen, that there was a racially based appraisal on that first appraisal. Now that could very well be true. I don't know if, if they, there's no fact to back that up, obviously, but uh, it looks that way, right? 100%. The facts look like it leads that way. Yes. Anyways, an opinion's an appraisal of value. I've always argued that the way we do appraisals is total baloney anyways. You have one human being right. come into a house mm -hmm. for 10 minutes, mumbling. If they do, because during the pandemic, remember, they were doing desk, yeah. they were doing desktops. They right. weren't even going into the homes. Right. Yeah. Which, which is, you know, you can get basically an accurate number without going into these homes. Potentially. In, in my opinion. Um just like an appraiser's value is, is their opinion. Right. You have, these are the most miserable people in the real estate industry. Wow. Mumbling, stumbling through a house, doing measurements, taking crappy, the crappiest pictures of all time. And they're out of there in 10 minutes, right? They're just trying to blow through their day. Now mm -hmm. the appraisal industry has certainly gone through some changes. I'm not Lots saying they're, they're killing it. They're not making tons of money on this deal, but technology is going to take over the appraisal industry. You're not going to see human beings coming up with these opinions of value, okay? I've always thought that if you have a low appraisal, the bank should automatically be having it tested by two or three automatically. more. Automatically. Well, but, this is saying that it, it, it that they should consider that, it, but no appraisal, I'm sure every agent can attest to the fact that you have had, I've had ones obviously come in low and the buyer has to fight it. How often does an appraiser actually yeah, but, voluntarily change their the, appraisal? The, the problem with this is, and Zero? we'll get to the second point that the White House fact sheet, want, they want us to go here to, which is basically having a, a second person involved. Right. The problem is the buyer doesn't want to pay for a second appraisal. Right. They just paid for one. The lender doesn't well, want to, to pay do for it. Well, to, to change a current appraisal, you wouldn't need to pay for. If the, if the, if you the went, lender has to eat it. Somebody has to pay the appraisal. Well, the, but, if, but that's if a, phys, if a person is physically going back out. Yes. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah if I'm you're just, just talking if you're, just, yeah, if you're arguing you're right. it and sending over different comps. Correct. That appraiser has to be willing to change what they've already yep. stamped as being a value. But the here's the problem with that yes and we've been in the situation so Too many, many times. times yes where you as the agent are saying to the appraiser who came out here is why this valuation should be changed right the appraiser the human being with their opinion of value right. yeah. starts peacocking of course of course outrageously. now you're telling them that they're wrong and then they're not gonna yeah. admit that they're wrong because they, they stamped it and they sent it to the bank telling the bank Correct. that this number is what i stand they by. do not want to say they're wrong right and now you're getting into this awkward, combative and, and they conversation. Have, and they have all of the power in this situation. Oh, yeah. Because all they have to say is no. Yeah, they have, they've got all the power. It, yeah. it's, this industry is ripe for massive disruption. I don't, I don't think you're going to see human beings going out and giving their opinions um, and getting paid for them in the appraisal process. And the bank relying on one licensed appraiser for very far into the future. All right, but that being said, here's where um, this release from the administration wants to go yep. with number two. Yep. The industry needs to adopt a more colorblind process to appraise a home. One possible solution is to separate the individual who goes to the home, takes the photos, does the measurements from the actual person doing a write-up and assessment of value uh, so as to reduce the impact of an on-site location-based racial bias. So that person doing, they're just sending in measurements and photos. They're not sending Which in who they met. on the MLS nine right, times out right. of 10. So why are you sending a person out there? But. You know, we, we mentioned this in a, in a couple of real words before where we were talking about cryptocurrency yeah. uh, and the real estate industry. Oh, way over my head now. Yep. The blockchain it is going to mm -hmm. eliminate all of this kind of bull crap. It's going to eliminate local town halls. It'll definitely eliminate the need for appraisers to go out and measure. All that stuff will be living on these smart contracts on the blockchain. Mm -hmm. We're not going to need appraisers. We're not going to need the little old ladies and old men sitting at the uh, the town halls. We'll get rid of those. Mm -hmm. What else could we get rid of? Attorneys. <sighs> No, nothing you like getting get rid, rid of attorneys. There's nothing like getting rid of attorneys. You're not getting rid of attorneys. I'm making a lot of friends on this yeah, real world episode. This will be a fun one. We will not. Bobby's shaking his head. 
No good, Bobby. No, keep going. He likes he wants getting to rid hear. of He's attorneys. Like, Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, so that's one possible solution right now while we're still using hu human beings. Third, uh, the efforts to automate property valuation should be enhanced. Absolutely. This is where the White House gets it right. Um, there are new products which can help. And while the GSEs are being controlled on experimental and new products, pilots, and technologies, this is one area that should be approved for significant focus. I agree. We've got so much technology out there. Uh, we really shouldn't. I mean, how many times right now have you waited to close a property for an extra three weeks because you can't get a you human being no, out there for his or her yeah. stupid right. opinion of value? Right. This is yes. so antiquated. It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And and certainly um, a computer or, or the well, blockchain and, and, is, and, is and, not going to have this and what you're, colorblind. And what you said earlier, or, or too. They're they not even, colorblind. And they're not even getting paid enough to do it. So yeah. I, don't, I can't even imagine that I many people even entering you know, that, that job force, if yeah. you're having to run around for like $200, yeah. I just, I've, I've had lots of issues with people's opinions of values. The market is the market is the market. If a buyer and a seller agree to a price, that's really the valuation. And now I know we've got the mortgage involved and they've got to really feel good about this, uh, valuation, but sending one person's opinion of value out. And so often does this happen where in this situation, you know, racially biased, but so often without a racial bias, does an appraiser come from out of town, doesn't know the area out of town and pick stupid comps, just right. pointless comps from all over the place that make absolutely no sense, or they don't have enough comps and they don't have enough common sense to figure out what the market is doing right now. Well, and again, what, and you, you see this, I feel like you see this more after a property has sold. How many times does an appraiser call you yeah. and say, hey, listen, I see that this, I got the other day, questions. this condo sold for blah, 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 blah. And, but the, the last one that sold was like this other number. How, how did it appraise out? And I'm yeah. like, what? Like you're, I'm, excuse me? Like you're asking me? How did it, now yeah. you're questioning the appraisal? It appraised, yeah. use it as a comp. And then, now, but now I'm questioning you as an appraiser because my one bedroom sold for 135 and the last one bedroom that sold for like 90, say, but there was two bedrooms that sold for like 160. Are you not looking yeah. at those two? Like, anyway, it's, I feel like you see it a lot after the fact too, when these appraisers are calling you, asking you about, are there, were there credits? Were there closing cost credits? Does that even matter? Like that's going to change the, the, it, it, it appraised out at that value with the closing cost credits in there. Like, is that anyway? And I, it's just, it's always so flabbergasting to me when appraisers are calling the agents after finding out yeah. like about the property. The, yeah. Listen, every industry, including real estate agents, everybody's, there's massive disruption coming, but the appraisal industry is probably the one we'll see even well, before now the before the, it all like where, where you have involved, massive so. massive uh yeah technology takeover so i'm sorry appraisers it, it just is what it is on that one racket mm -hmm. number two 2020 profile of home buyers and sellers national association of realtors uh just re uh they didn't just release it but it's out so you, it's out you can we have um, no idea when it came out you but can we check just it out. found it all right yeah characteristics of home buyers i'll go through some of these in the call please and, let's do there's can, a lot of, it's a lot of words first time home buyers make, made up 31 percent of all time buyers a dip from last year's 33 percent so these are the full year of 2020 this is mm -hmm. where 2020 compares to 2019 year over year so 31 percent of buyers were first time home buyers during 2020 would have thought that it would have actually been an increase. Maybe. Maybe. No, I would because people, you know, in their apartments, wanting to get out, never bought a home, living through the pandemic. Maybe. Like, I want to get out. I don't out, know. What, I mean, but people are also losing their jobs or are they concerned about losing their jobs? Maybe it's not now not the time to pull the trigger. Although rates were so flipping low. Maybe I agree with you. Yeah. Yeah. Although you did see a lot of like really young people just say, you know what? I'm just going to move back home. I'm well, going to give up the apartment in New York City well, and so move back many, home. Well, so many. Of yeah. course. Yeah. All right. The typical buyer was 47 years old holding steady from last year the median household income for 2019 uh rose rose again 96. to 96,500 so typical home buyer 47 mm -hmm. years old uh 62 percent of recent buyers were married couples 19 percent were single females nine percent were single fail uh males mm -hmm. and I love it. Look nine percent were Coming unmarried out. couples absolutely yeah we and we've seen this stat before oh for sure yeah where, yeah where the um single ladies just are dominating single dudes single dudes what are you doing get out of your mother's basements <laughs> 12 percent of home buyers purchased a multi-generational home same as last year uh 91 percent of recent home buyers identified as heterosexual three percent what's hetero 
Uh, 91%. You, you, you like, you're a man and a woman. You're, uh, you're, you're a man or. You're, 91%. No, you're, you're a man and a woman. 91% of recent home buyers identified yes. as being both? No. Like you like, oh, you are a man or a woman. No, you like man, like you like your, you like the opposite sex. Heterosexual? 91% of people? Oh, you like the opposite sex. Yes. Okay. I've oh, got Lord. you. I've got you. 91% of... Did you skip health? You, as much as you skipped health? Yeah, Did I you mean, skip science? Well, there's all these words now. I know that's a, that's a common one though, right? Yeah, I mean... It, 3%, 3% gay or mm -hmm, lesbian, 1% mm -hmm. bisexual, 5% preferred not to answer okay there you go there you go uh, 18 percent of recent why is that even important 18 percent of recent home buyers were veterans two percent were active duty service members 27 percent uh was the primary reason for purchasing a home was a desire to own that's a good number i mean agents get out there and start you know, veterans 18 percent of recent home buyers were veterans. clearing your yeah. yeah i mean get yourself all dolled up for understanding those those loans for yeah. sure uh, at 27%, the primary reason for purchasing a home was the desire to own, own a home of their own. Obviously. Okay. Yep. For first time home buyers, this number jumps to 64%. Anything stand out there? No, not really. I just, I like the single ladies. I mean, single ladies. They're doing it. What's 19%. All What's the, the single ladies, you know. There you go. Yeah. You got it. That's as far right. as, that's, that's where we're stopping that. Yeah. Okay. You want to do the sellers? No, well, we could. I mean, I think obviously what's really interesting in here too, um, I mean, do you want to keep, you want to keep reading? And, no, no, and then, I, Cause I feel like we're like, we're going I, back to health class here. I don't know if you wanted to know we're not going back to health <laughs> class. Again, I think it's very helpful to, to, to go through because it does talk about homes that people are, are buying, the characteristics of homes. There's a um, lot of information. There, there is a, there's a lot to chew on in here and definitely worth a read um, to wrap your head around. And then also, too, for like your marketing strategy, too, like who are you targeting? Again, even just that whole veteran set, that's a huge chunk of veterans. So like, do you know what you can offer them? Do you know how you can help them? Can you guide them? Can you market them? Hook yourself up with a mortgage guy that is well versed with a veteran, because again, eighteen percent—that's that's a that's a decent part of, of 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 people in my mind. So yeah, for the veteran, I it's like all, it's all pretty know, eye opening. You know what stands out uh, to me is only eight percent, even when the market is good, right? It was really good in twenty twenty. Values were going up. Only eight percent of recent home sales, twenty twenty home sales, were for sale by owners. This remains close to the lowest recorded share since the report started in 1981. Yeah. So only 8% of people decided in a thriving market where prices are going up to sell their home on their own. What does that mean? It means it's clearly not working well for those who choose to do it. If it was working fantastic for for sale by owners, they'd yeah. be telling their friends, I sold my home, it was the yeah. easiest process. I had no problems. Yeah. And that number would go from eight to 12 to 22 to, you know. I think what's important though, as you read further though, of those 8%, a majority of them were selling to somebody that they knew. For sale by owners typically sell for less than the selling price of other homes, Fizbo's. Mm -hmm. Home, Fizbo's, the Bozo's, home sold at a median of $217,900 last year, mm -hmm. significantly lower than the median of agent assisted homes at $242,300. Huge amount of money that you're leaving yeah. on the table. But again, if you read the next the next paragraph, it does say they're selling quicker, but most times people are selling them to somebody that they know. So yep. even though we're considering them a Fizbo, they may have never even really went out on the open market. So. Yeah, I mean, if that was working for the majority of people, the number would be. Increasing. They've been recording this since 1981, right? The number would be going up, not down. Right. It's trending down to the lowest level, uh, right. you know, in history here. Yeah. So since they've been recording this, mm -hmm. okay. All right. Anything else stand out? No. Again, I just I think I think there's like you said, it's there's a lot of information in there. Certainly worth going he, through. Here's it really, another one. It breaks up into like search processes. Yeah. And, Profes uh, about the professionals, where you happen in. Another one that stands out is 43% of recent buyers' first step was to look online. So Obviously. if your online website, your, your presence is not really tight, your, your GMB, your Google My Business page, that's not really dialed in right now. You, sh you should be spending some time there. 18% of agents first, uh, of buyers rather, first contacted an agent. Okay, so 43% are going online first, 18%, which listen, that 18%, you think that's going to go up or down in the future? It's going to go down. It's going to go down. Yeah, absolutely. For so sure. uh, get your online game tight. 91% of recent buyers found their real estate agent to be very or somewhat useful, somewhat, somewhat useful information source. So that's, Oops. I'd like to know what Oopsies. thought they were very 
useful and then somewhat. That's a big, you it know, because out of that 91, if, if 60% somewhat. were on the somewhat side, what does somewhat that's mean? not good. Just like, like, hey, like, you know. Like, I somewhat like your shirt. They, like, it's an insult. I love this shirt, I though. think it's, I'm, you know? I, again, I'm just, just saying, I, it, it actually goes really well with your, your new kicks that you got down there. Thank you. Yep. I'm not going to show them. No, I, please don't. All right. Uh, no, no, do not insert a photo, no, Bobby. They're, they're, We're not showing off the good. kicks. Nicole, if I commented on her kicks, she would. Oh, she's got flip flops. I on. got my flops on. Okay, uh, market. I only of the show week. off my socks. Yeah, yeah. Which you have on a previous real word. No, that's what I'm saying. That's yeah, nothing yeah. that I've ever really. Okay, uh, market of the week. Glenda Baker. We've talked about her on past real words. I love Glenda. I've had her on my podcast. She's fun. She's fantastic. I actually saw a. Billy Joel concert with Glenda. With she was her? sitting right next to me. Was she know? doing it? Jumping up and down? She was loving it. Yeah, yeah, she had a great time. We had a great time. Did you jump up and down? I'd love to see. I kind of want to be at a concert I with you. I was doing it, yeah. Like, what do you do? Are you on your phone? It was Madison Square Garden. Are you sitting on your phone? Like you're sitting? No, you, we no? had like 20 of us. We were partying. You did? Yeah. You, like, you participated? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you don't like fun. Tom Ferry was there. Josh okay. Rubin. Well. Tom Tool. Joe Biggs. Whole crew. Whole bunch of us. All right. Love it. Here's how this agent generated 108000 in GCI gross commission income so far in 2021. So, Glenda Baker, this is- in an, five. That was in five months. Inman article. Yeah, so far in five months. Yeah, because it's okay. June. That would be closer to six months. If you're not following Glenda on TikTok, it seems like she went from like 30,000 followers on TikTok to over 300,000, like literally in the last three months. She has just been hammering the content. Her style of content, and and maybe Bobby will even pop up a video. Yeah, I would. Yeah, you, should we? Let's let's do that. Do that one. That let's one do that right now. Hit. So once upon a time, I sold a big ass house, and I made one hundred and thirty seven thousand dollars in commission on that one house. And rather than taking that money and investing it in real estate, I went and bought a brand new Mercedes. I went on a shopping spree, and I pissed that money away. Instead of buying a townhouse on Lenox Road, it was right in the middle of foreclosure season. I could have bought that townhouse for $100,000. That townhouse today, that in 1995 was $100,000, is a million dollars. That Mercedes is worth zero, and those clothes don't fit. This is a cautionary tale. So Glenda's style of video, they're all the same. If you go through her feed, it is a off camera view where she's looking at a you know probably somebody sitting right off the camera her her, her uh, videographer's name is denver she's probably looking at denver like this way i don't even know if i've got it right and she's storytelling she's just telling story after story after story and they're recording those stories throughout a whole day process you it, can tell because she's can t yeah i mean it's yeah. she's wearing the same to get um, good nuggets like that it's you, you got to yeah, you just have go. Conversation. Yeah. And she's just having conversations. And again, I and just she just talks well. She's yeah. just Well, she's got the southern she's just, charm. It's fun. She looks good. Her yeah. hair's always quaffed, right? It's quaffed. Yeah, there's a quaff. She's got like She's a, quaffing? She's there's yeah. Mm -hmm. hmm. I'm gonna ask I'm gonna text Glenda. Ask her if she's got a quaff. Are you quaffing? That's Glenda with two ends too, by the way. <laughs> Are you quaffing? No, it's 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 poofed right. It's like, you know. So what she's doing, she's telling stories very well, but she's consistent on her TikTok feed. So she's posting every single day or twice a day. People know what to expect when they go to her feed. She's not trying to get fancy or cute, trying to do like some huge, crazy video right. over here and then doing yeah. like a tip on one day. Yeah. She, it's the same thing every single day, rinse and repeat over and over and over and over again. Those are the social platforms that do the best where they rinse and repeat, they're good at something, and they just hammer it. Yeah. We're not trying to do too many different things. Well, once you watch one, it's like you naturally are going to then watch all of them. Right. Yeah. Yeah, you get hooked. And it's that bite-sized content. Oh, so yeah. It's very we fall into rabbit holes on TikTok all the time. What I don't know why Glenda's not doing, and she probably has a reason for this, is she's not putting those uh, TikTok pieces of content on her Instagram Reels. I would definitely be using those on IG Reels. Bobby? It's because IG Reels, they put out an update where it recognizes the TikTok. Yeah, but, but what it, no, no, no. I'm not saying save it from TikTok and, and putting it just, on, on just IG. I'm upload saying, it. I'm saying you upload it natively to, to both. Real, yeah. So it, you it upload the. In app creation, like TikTok did in the beginning, Instagram Reels promotes like their remixes. So like every time they right. a new feature. I, I, I understand that they want Instagram Reels, and we've covered this, wants you to 
build the video in Within, the app. Yes. That's what you're saying, yeah. right, Bobby? Yeah. But I've seen plenty of people that are posting on both TikTok and Instagram uploading natively. Yeah. And they're taking off in both places. Well, again, so, but, but but to be worried about views though seems a little silly. Like she's I getting would, two point five million views. Just have a lid on your, in, on live on your Instagram too, because if if I'm following you on TikTok, I, I I'm gonna start following you on Instagram too. I, my point is, I go on TikTok and listen. It says here, um, you know, what does it say about her going on TikTok? If if many would say that TikTok is just child's play. Well, if you consider the hundred and eight thousand dollars in five months directly from TikTok child's play then sign me up. This is Jimmy Burgess writing the, the Inman article mm -hmm. on, on Glenda. I go on TikTok maybe once a week now at this point, right? Yeah, I don't, I used and to, I used to go on all, now I, I do real, I real, I watch reels. Yeah, yeah, reels. Yeah. I, I like the Instagram platform better. My mm -hmm. point is there are multiple people like you that are just like, oh, I'm just not going on, or like me, I'm not going on TikTok that mm -hmm. much anymore. I'm just going on Instagram, you know, the older crowd, right? We might be older. <laughs> I mean, we can, you, we, you can are. Ask, we can ask, we can ask, we have, we have our uh, intern we're Lexi talking in the about house. Like, we're talking like you, three years. Using TikTok or Instagram more? She's How TikTok. old are you? 19. So, so Lexi's 19 years old. So she's old. over there laughing at us. Yeah, yeah. Like, ah, ah, ah. She, she's on TikTok all the way. They probably use Facebook still. Right. And w which we do. <laughs> <laughs> which Facebook's algorithm is crap right now. Um, anyways. Yeah. You're going to see that a lot. Right. And, but the point is Glenda who has a ridiculous ability to connect with agents and get referrals in Atlanta yeah. because of the way she gifts to agents and recognizes agents birthdays. She has a whole system for this. Glenda being having all that content on Instagram, I think would really would would really do well for her. She's obviously killing TikTok. She's she's yeah. doing something You're going to give her some right. tips. No, yeah. I'm not giving her any tips. I would just I already have the content. I would put them on both platforms. Both, yeah. I would argue that, that putting them on both is is fine because there's a lot of people not looking at both platforms. Right. So it's great. It's fantastic yeah. content. I mean, even just like IGTV, maybe it's not necessarily a reel. I don't know. But yeah, I mean, why not? Yeah, you could even live on your grid. I, I'd get it up there. Yeah. Now, looking at this, it's like, boy, and, and hearing Lexi say it's only oh, TikTok. Do you on Instagram at all? Not, not, as big not on many. Again, if you go on, I, years old, I, I not would as big. I would say out of the last, you know, four people that we've hired, two were in their twenties, and they just set up an Instagram page, like a like they didn't even have an Instagram page. Set it up for the business of real estate. Is that yes. what you're saying? Yes. They were just on TikTok. People are still using Snapchat. Are you still using Snapchat? Yeah. Snapchat How often is Snapchat. that? So are you using Snapchat just one on one with your friends? Communication. Communication. Yeah, yeah. No texting. So like it. They're snapping. She texts her parents. You know. <laughs> you bought your kids iPhones. They're like thinking they're texting people. They're not texting anybody. They're texting you. Ah, uh, I got another text message. It's like it's like getting an email. Oh, my mom's texting <laughs> me. Oh, loser. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. All right, everybody. So anyway, so you, uh, this was. A I'm, great I'm curious lesson. though. No, we, we've yeah. got Lexi here. She's 19 yeah. years old. I'm curious. Uh, TikTok's number one. Snapchat's number two. Yeah, Instagram's like more like. What's Instagram? That's your your business. That's your LinkedIn. No, she can just. I'll I'll re I'll re say what she's saying. It's all right, Bobby. So the the algorithm on TikTok the algorithm on TikTok has got you hooked. Yeah. 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 I got you. Oh, it, dude, it gets us hooked. So well, I'll, I'll, sh I'll send you some and you're like, oh, I just fell into a four hour hole no, of TikTok. That's why I only go on TikTok once, once a week a, yeah, now because I'm like, hours. I don't, I don't want to lose. I don't want to so, lose. I have to tell you, yeah. it, I have to say TikTok, I, I think helped um, save a lot of people during the pandemic. Yeah, that's I mean, it was, I it. it was, it was, it was, fun. I will say though that it's gotten um, some of our agents, well, I, I guess it's reels. I feel like reels and TikTok are pretty much the same, but really obsessed now with like coming up with like funny, creative, like videos so, where maybe it's like, maybe we could just like, you know, my, know. my argument is, uh, or, or my suggestion would be, we got to rethink as real estate professionals, what Glenda's doing right on TikTok. I mean, TikTok, the app is going to change. Right. And then 19 year olds in five years are going to hate TikTok. We already know that's going to happen. Uh, you, you won't be 19 anymore. You'll be 24. So don't worry about it, Lexi. But it's going to change over time. So we might as well jump in there and just destroy the app like every other app. You know what I mean? 
Just another thing. I don't think Glenda's destroying the app though. She, I feel she's like I have a whole great, other great sink of dishes content. to do now. No, yeah. it's great. I think I think what she's doing is fabulous. Yeah. yeah. There's listen, Instagram reels, YouTube shorts. If you go on your favorite YouTube channel right now and you look at how their shorts, we gotta start doing some shorts, Bobby. How the shorts on YouTube are getting so much more views than some of their other YouTube content. Mm -hmm. It's because YouTube is pushing them in the algorithm. Right. TikTok still has a very organic algorithm. Instagram reels on Instagram. You get so many more views posting a reel than you do just posting. It is interesting your, though, because uh, I timeline. feel like though with the reel, you could f like for some reason, like all these pregnant moms seem to be like their stories seem to be popping up. I don't know you're, how you like pregnant moms. No, I, you're, I, I, you're I don't like pregnancy. Um, I, 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 I don't like children. So I, I don't know how to get out. I don't know how to get out of you're it. You're in it. I'm, I'm, I'm like knee deep in like, I saw somebody on uh, Twitter ladies on Twitter saying Twitter's probably like, just are you using Twitter at all? No, not really. No. So I saw somebody on, on Twitter saying, um, that they created a second YouTube account just to get out of the algorithm feed yeah. that they were in because they were feeding them so many videos <laughs> they wanted to get I away from. I think I need to do that. It's yeah. it, what they're feeding me on reels account. right now is like I'm. It's sometimes yeah. I'm just like I'm out. I'm I'm out. All right. So shout out to Glenda, Glenda. Uh, doing a great job. Marketeer of the week, Glenda. Love you. Hopefully I'll see you soon. We'll see. We'll see her in uh, Dallas in October. Oh boy, she'll be there. Love it. All right. That's your real word. I'd uh, love to hear your thoughts in the comments and we'll see you next week, guys. Hey.